Did you know that the landing gear is the second largest contributor to drag for most aircraft, after the wing? And that this drag can be cut in half by just putting little fairings? This is why aircraft designers go to the trouble of designing retractable landing gears. In this video, we will look at the various types of drag and how to reduce it, to make your design fly faster and longer. Let's get started. Drag is the aerodynamic force that opposes the aircraft's motion through the air. As far as aircraft design is concerned, the primary objective is usually to minimize drag. In spite of the desire to keep drag as low as possible, we may want to control it. For example, during cruise, we want the drag to be as low as possible, but during approach for landing, a higher drag value helps slow down the aircraft. To compare the drag forces on various bodies, we use a non-dimensional number called the drag coefficient. The drag coefficient is found by dividing the drag force by the product of dynamic pressure and reference area. The reference area may be different depending how we are calculating drag. The dynamic pressure is given as half times the product of density and velocity squared. The drag coefficients of some basic shapes are shown here. A lower drag coefficient means the object moves more easily through the fluid, less resistance while a higher drag coefficient means more resistance and harder movement. Generally, the total drag is broken into two classes, drag due to flow separation and drag due to skin friction. Drag can be classified into the following categories. Up first is the basic drag, also known as form drag, and it is a type of pressure drag. It is caused by resultant pressure distribution over the surface of body. It can be thought of as the component of the pressure force parallel to the tangent to the flight path. Imagine an object moving through air. There is a difference in the pressure acting along the surface. The drag force is the product of the pressure acting on a cross-sectional area of the body, normal to the flight path. Then comes the skin friction drag. This drag is due to rubbing of air molecules along the surface of the airplane. Intuitively, it is proportional to the wetted area of the airplane. If you submerge your aircraft in a water tank and remove it, all the surface area that gets wet is called the wetted area. It also depends on the skin surface roughness. The value for this drag is highly dependent on how much of the flow over the aircraft component is laminar and how much of it is turbulent. Due to this, it is often difficult to analyze skin friction drag. Up next is lift-induced drag. This is due to the circulation of air around the wing in the form of vortices. This circulation tips the lift coefficient backwards, creating a force component that adds to the total drag. I found this video by Flight Club very helpful in understanding induced drag. Then comes wave drag. This drag is experienced when the aircraft flies at high subsonic or transonic speeds. It is caused by the rise in pressure around a body due to the formation of a normal shock wave. Finally, there is miscellaneous drag. This type of drag is often overlooked, and it is due to a number of small contributions, like drag due to small inlets and outlets, access panels, etc. Thus, the total drag coefficient can be considered as the sum of all individual drag coefficients. For low subsonic aircraft, we can ignore the contribution of wave drag. In this equation, basic drag, skin friction drag, and miscellaneous drag are often lumped together into a single number called the minimum drag coefficient, CD min. It is also known as profile drag, parasitic drag, or zero lift drag. Another type of drag, called trim drag, arises due to the process of trimming the aircraft. Deflecting control surfaces usually increases drag. For example, if a conventional airplane is loaded with its CG far forward, a higher deflection of the elevator will be required to trim it. This not only results in additional profile drag, but also results in the extra lift the wing must generate that increases the lift-induced drag. Therefore, it is important to size the tail so that the elevator is close to neutral position while cruising. When calculating the total drag of the aircraft, we often find the drag contributions of its various parts like the wing, fuselage, tail, etc., and add them all up. Interference drag takes into account proximity of component to another. For example, consider the juncture between wing and fuselage. The presence of both bodies constrains the airflow compared to that of the individual components. 
This increases the local airspeed and thus increases drag. Interference drag is usually considered as part of skin friction drag by multiplying the skin friction drag by an interference factor. Now, let's look at some ways to reduce drag. Add fillets at junctures such as wing and fuselage or tail and fuselage to reduce interference drag. If possible, use tadpole-shaped fuselages to reduce parasitic drag. Tadpole fuselage shape has lesser drag, and that is why it is used on sailplanes or gliders. Here, you can see the drag coefficients for different types of fuselages. Cover the motor or engine with a cowling. This not only streamlines the body, but also improves aesthetics. Add landing gear fairings, or consider using retractable landing gears. Belly landing can also be considered. If using fixed landing gear, make the struts airfoil shaped with round leading edges and sharp trailing edges. Reduce trim drag by properly designing the horizontal tail and try to minimize the horizontal tail load during cruise. Add fairings to or streamline camera mounts and other components. If possible, decrease the surface roughness to reduce skin friction drag. Try reducing gaps in connected parts like control surfaces. And whenever possible, remove it, streamline it, seal it and smooth it. I hope these tips will help you design and build a fast and efficient aircraft. If you found this video informative, consider supporting the channel via PayPal or via Buy Me a Coffee. Your support will help me keep creating content on aircraft design. The links are in the description. For more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. You can watch these videos next for more tools to design your own aircraft. Thank you for watching.